welcome back to T-Bone Southern Ride. As we're going down the road at half the speed we need, had to run some errands today, so I thought today would be a good day to go ahead and give you the third video in the Rob Zombie series, which started out with House of a Thousand Corpses and the Devil's Rejects. So if you're back you're seeing the third video of four this is number three of four and this video right here guys is going to wrap up the series of the house of a thousand corpses now if you've been with me from the beginning and you've been keeping up then you know there's one more rob zombie movie that will be coming today uh so let me say happy halloween uh You gonna turn buddy or just gonna sit there they're giving you the chance take the chance uh, and we're talking about of course the third movie being three from hell uh, a big time jump guys uh, from this movie this movie of course was made in 2019 and of course we haven't heard nothing from our characters since 2005 or 6 whatever I said in the last video we haven't heard from our characters since then so uh, three from hell guys we actually realized at the beginning of the movie three from hell and of course Rob Zombie says that he made this movie because the fans of the franchise were clamoring for more and they were literally sending him emails and mail telling him hey uh no you need to make another movie so you're not done yet so we see the resurgence of three of our characters with a new one being added into the mix as well uh of course, we find out at the end of The Devil's Rejects when we were pretty well much certain that it was the end, seeing as how our three protagonists ended up driving into a hell of gunfire and being shot all to pieces. But we find out in Three from Hell in 2019, several years on down the road, that they survived uh, all three of them survived the onslaught and uh, we find them in jail uh, kind of opens up like a news broadcast uh, three from hell does where it follows the story of the fireflies uh, of course the devil's rejects now is what they're constantly being referred to as it kind of follows where they were and what happened to them uh, we find Captain Spaulding, Otis Driftwood, and Baby are in prison, uh, and rightfully so, uh, which tells us from the Devil's Rejects that even though Sheriff Wydell went completely off of the reservation, uh, our three criminals ended up essentially where they were supposed to be, and that was behind bars. So, uh, uh, in essence, there was still a, a certain amount of justice. Now, again, in this series, as I said in The Devil's Rejects, Rob Zombie was great at introducing characters, and we find in Three from Hell, of course, before I, before I move on to that, I have to say that Sid Haig, who played Captain Spaulding in the entire franchise, of course lost a, a a battle with illness I believe it was cancer but he was able to shoot some of three from hell which ended up having him being executed in prison so uh, rest in peace to Mr. Sid Haig uh, a, a man who brought us a great character and uh, brought us a great protagonist brought us a great uh, villain uh, in Captain Spaulding. 
Uh, but of course, we find them, uh, it's now into the 80s, the later part of the 80s, and everything has changed for uh, uh, not only the world, but especially for our three uh, protagonists. Of course, uh, Captain Smalden now has been executed, and we start leading into Baby and Otis's execution. Uh, of course you find that they are going to be executed and there's an escape made uh, that actually ends up with Otis escaping and of course then they go back for baby uh, sorry about that guys I had to pull over and check something but anyway uh, Otis escapes with the help of a brother whom is played by Richard Blake. I believe it was his first name was Richard. I know his last name was Blake. If I'm wrong on that, I'll put it in the video right here. Uh, but he turns out to be the one they call the wolf, the wolf man. He is a brother to Otis and Baby. So Otis ends up escaping. And of course they end up taking the warden of the prison into uh, kind of, <laughs> They kind of commandeered him, and they made him go in and release Baby, and of course Baby walked out of prison uh, on her own, and of course, uh, you know, the murder and mayhem begins all over again. Uh, but Richard Blake, guys, keep that name in your hat. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm pretty sure his name is Richard. Uh, he ends up being in Three from Hell as now the third person, and uh, in an interview I had saw, there was some people who were afraid that Richard Blake would not be able to fit in with Bill Mosley and Sherry Moon Zombie, that his character wouldn't be, uh, I guess, uh, as well received as those characters were, but he was... Uh, I think I think Richard Blake did a great job playing the Wolfman in the uh, uh, in Three from Hell because he fit right in. He kind of has, you know. Again, Otis Driftwood is one of those guys, you know, with your Michael Myers and your Jason Voorhees. They always had big, imposing. They were just huge guys who were very big, very imposing, very scary. Uh, they could scare their victims easily sometimes with just their presence but you know very real life is what uh, rob zombie was going for with this and of course richard blake just like bill mosley wasn't a, a huge guy but what they lacked in size they made up for in just their voices the way they acted their eyes uh very 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 much they were not just one dimensional type actors they actually had substance so uh, when you can sell a scene with just a look or you can sell a scene with just a word or a phrase uh, then you've uh, you've done something you've done something pretty special but once they're all three out of jail uh, they decide to do what all their heroes, their criminal heroes, have done in the past and years and years. And when you're on the run from the law, you know, what do you do? Well, you, you go to Mexico. And uh, uh, our, our, three, uh, our three escapees here are no different from anybody else. So uh, they find themselves in Mexico. And there's another character that was introduced in Mexico. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, a midget actor. Uh, I'm not sure what the politically correct term is. I'm not trying to be politically correct. Uh, and I never knew his name. I should have looked that up. I might look that up and insert his name right here. Uh, he, uh, it, he was introduced into the franchise and, uh, you know, he kind of had the hots for Baby and Baby kind of looked at him and of course she goes back and as I said in the Devil's Rejects they had became a family and she kind of talks about Tiny a little bit in the uh, in the movie 3 from Hell uh, but we find that it, it's kind of the it's kind of a new situation an old situation with a new twist on it 
win there in Mexico because uh, Rondo, who was portrayed by Danny Trejo in The Devil's Rejects, is dead. And we are assuming the way it was left that Wolfman killed him for helping Wydell catch, of course, Spaulding, Baby, and Otis. Uh, so we find uh, uh, that his son in Mexico, as, uh, whose name is Aquarius, we have found that he has, uh, he has uh, <laughs> taken up his dad's moniker. He's like the head of a drug cartel, you know, rich. And he kind of, kind of through the uh, Mexican grapevine, hears that, you know, these three people have landed in Mexico looking for a shelter from the police. So uh, he kind of is like, well, you know, yeah, they're not going to have to worry about uh, the federalities, but they're going to have to worry about me. And, of course, Rondo's son was uh, portrayed by Emilio Rivera. And, of course, now Emilio Rivera is one of those guys I have spoken about him before. Uh, he's done guest spots on... Uh, uh, he, he was on an episode uh, of Renegade and of course uh, contemporary newer fans of Emilio's will know him as Marcus from the Sons of Anarchy and uh, the Mayans TV series. Uh, he played uh, uh, Marcus Alvarez but he ends up being Rondo's son in Three from Hell and uh, yeah, he kind of uh, goes after our guys here. And uh, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but it definitely makes for an interesting movie when you have Emilio Rivera and his entire militia basically hunting down three killers and their killers themselves. And, um, and that's another thing about what uh, uh, Rob Zombie does with this, this, uh, this franchise is that he... <laughs> He makes the bad guys, you know, they're, they're, they're bad, awful people, but he always seems to come up with that one character that's worse than they are. He did it with, uh, with uh, Sheriff Wydell, and he done it again with uh, Aquarius, who is played by Emilio Rivera, and, uh, you know, everybody in this little town is, of course, scared of this group because they are a cartel, they are dangerous, uh, they're assassins essentially, uh, just a, a well-rounded group of psychos that are going after three psychos, uh, but you start, uh, once they escape, you start realizing that the relationship between Baby and Otis and the Wolfman and even Mother Firefly before she was killed in the Devil's Rejects and of course Sid Haig who played Captain Spaulding you really get the sense that uh, of course they're crazy they're psychotic characters they're killers but you really start to see that uh, uh, the family dynamic is there kind of uh, stealing a little bit from the Leatherface franchise from the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre about family being kind of the strong tie that bonds and uh, you, you kind of see gallantry take over in Three from Hell uh, of course uh, I'm not going to give uh, again I'm not going to give away the end uh, Three from Hell was made in 2019 and I'm sure because I have seen it on one I don't remember which one it was but I think one of the streaming services is actually carrying the entire franchise so uh, you know jump on there today's Halloween you might be able to get to watch them I'm sure they're not going to disappear at midnight tonight by any means but uh, uh, give them a watch and if you've seen them give them a rewatch. I really thought they were good and uh, uh, it kind of comes into why I chose uh, of course Rob Zombie to be the king of Halloween on T-Bone Southern Ride was this franchise I really enjoyed all three of the movies in the franchise uh, I, I think it was a great story arc I think that uh, 
you know, we, we got to follow these characters who most of them we met in 2003. And, of course, we jump, we fast forward all the way to 2019. And, you know, uh, we're still invested in the characters and we're still invested in what their story is going to be. And to do that and to be that, you have to be good at the art of storytelling. And I think that's something that Rob captures. He is very good at the art of storytelling. But uh, this will be a little bit shorter video, guys. But I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching uh, this series. Now, we're not done. There's still one more video to come. And it will be a Rob Zombie video. But which one do you think I'm going to choose to do? Uh, some of you who've been following have probably got an idea. I'm not going to spoil it. I'll wait till the next video to tell you. But guys, remember to like, share, and comment. Uh, if you're over on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that uh, like button. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when T-Bone Southern Ride drops a new video. But happy Halloween, guys. And remember, there's an announcement coming, and it will be the next video. I'm going to make a major announcement about T-Bone Southern Ride that will be on the next video. But until then, guys, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell. A great franchise. Give it a look. Give it a check. Yeah, if you have, check it back. And until the next time, guys, I'm T-Bone, and this has been The Southern Ride.